It's nice to, to be back uh, to share the word of God and you would see us wear, uh, rather me wearing a very colorful uh, shirt. And this is uh, the parting gift when we left Kenya. Uh, and that's how colorful the life is in Kenya. So uh, if you remember last time, I had a privilege to bring uh, the message of waiting on God. And we have seen how faith plays a very pivotal role during the time of waiting. And we have also looked at practical aspect of things to do while we wait on God. And if, I, if you remember, I also played a song while I am waiting uh, and shared how that song ministered to me and my family during the time of our wait. But then I never shared uh, the testimony of our waiting. And today I thought, let me put a light on that testimony and how that song ministered us. So the last four hours of a project uh, in Kenya, God has blessed us in, to be in, in Kenya the last four years. And he has blessed us tremendously in every area of our lives while we were there in it. Professionally, I was blessed to, be, uh, to hold the position of head of the process and tools for the entire region of uh, Africa, and I was just three steps below the vice president of the region. In the area of my ministry, God has blessed us. Uh, to me, from my ushering ministry, he brought me to serve as an elder to the local church there. And I was being trained by some of the best mentors in the ministry. Shanti was leading praise and worship and she took another responsibility to train the local team to sing praise and worship songs in Hindi, Tamil, Telugu, so that they are equipped because the church was uh, situated in the Asian community. And she was also, Shanti was also leading the entire parent teacher body in the school uh, who used to organize the charitable events in conjunction with the embassies and the charity organization. And we had wonderful friends and awesome Bible study group. We had everything, everything that one could hope for. And our prayer was that, Lord, looks like this is a very good place and a time of our life. And let it be here for a while. And, but come a December 6th of 2015, and that time Erickson was going through a rough patch financial losses, uh, an economy slump. And suddenly my boss calls me on that day and he says, uh, company is not doing good and we have decided to scrap entire your unit. And along with me, four of us, we are being told to relieve, uh, to, to stop working by 31st of December. So 5th of December, I was told, and we were told to stop everything by 31st of December. Four years of our life, 17 years of staying outside, suddenly we come to a news, leave it. And, and then you go back. We were devastated by the news. We started praying, our friends started praying, the church were praying with us. And, and we started approaching our friends, our friends were approaching their friends to get any influence for me to continue with another position in Ericsson. But nothing happened. Nothing. So just one request that I requested to be continue until Anna completes her term. And they gave me extension of three, min three months. And eventually on June of, uh, June of that year, we had to return back to India. And we were frustrated, we were devastated as what is happening. And why is our prayer, God is not answering our prayer. At one time we were so low, it appears even is God bothered about us. We've been praying and praying, but nothing happened. And we had to come back to India. But God's answer to that entire prayers was simply wait on me and stay put. 
And that period of waiting lasted for one long year. And believe me, every day was longer than a year. Every day was longer than a year. And that is how that song encouraged us to keep on going, to keep on going. But before I want to share what happened next, and we'll come to that point later during my message. And let me share my screen. And I realized something that life is about a journey. And our God is leading us in this journey from taking us from one place to another to the place of promise. And like in any journey or in every journey, there are place of weight and there are place of movement. And with God-given wisdom, we know when to wait and when to move. For things like everyday life, we know when there is a red light, we need to stop. When there is a green light, we need to go. We know we need to stand in a line to get somewhere else. So with godly given wisdom, we know how to think, how to handle things. The problem or confusion starts when we don't know what to do or something happens that is beyond our purview of taking decisions. It is only then that we come across a situation and circumstances that are beyond our wisdom and knowledge and that we tend to rely on God to lead us. We need God. To lead and we as human always get confused as when to wait when to move when to take decision based on our godly wisdom or when to wait on god and the problem is we always tend to be impatient when god wants us to move or wait and we become so comfortable and lazy and complacent when god wants us to move and that's the situation we are always in it and hence I titled my message as time to move. There is a time to wait and there is time to move. And this time we would like to see when it is the time to move. And if you have seen yesterday, government has announced unlock phase four, uh, where many of the avenues will now be, will start functioning. And many of us would need to move out uh, from a comfort of a home uh, to go work, to do other business. And there will be many such occasions in our life. Now what happens is there are certain situations coming in our life where we become so complacent that we get stuck in situations. Either we love to remain in them because we are so scared to go out of that situation or we become so afraid that we think the worst, we are in worse situation and outside will be even more worse. Let me give you an example. Now you are in a, now you are in a certain job and you love everything in it. Everything is perfect around it. Your boss loves you. You've got good colleagues, you've got a better pay package. Everything is good. But it is so good that slowly this job becomes a trap for your goal fulfillment. You know, you know that you need to move in order to grow, but because you are, everything is so good that you don't want to move. And give me another situation. Let me give you another situation. Now you are in a certain project. You feel stuck. Nothing is working. Everybody is against you. Everybody is pushing against your morale and your confidence is all time low. And you're so scared that if you, you think that if this situation is like this, even if I move, you're not sure how the situation outside would be. And hence you decide to stay in your current situation. The third thing, now you are in a situation where God is moving you from one place to another and he takes you to a temporary place and you make that temporary place your permanent place without realizing that you are still in a journey. So, whether it is for good reason or bad, with the fear of change, we restrict our vision 
that we don't see the life beyond it. And this is a life around us, unfortunately. And sadly, it is also in the lives of the children of God. So I want you to look around. Look deep inside you. Are you also stuck in any of such situation or circumstances? Look inside. And now let me take you to one such great journey from Bible. And I want you to uh, move your, uh, take your Bible to Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. And as Hasani has read, the Lord has said to Abraham, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. Now the call to Abraham is not only a command, but also a promise of God. Now Abraham was living in Haran and Haran was a bustling trade center, just like second Rabad. And now he was commanded to leave Haran to a place which he had no idea. Just he had a promise. Now imagine, had Abraham remained in Haran, not heeding and obeying uh, the word of God and not acting upon the promise, he would not have come to a place of blessing that God has appointed for him. Now God's plan called for Abraham to move towards the blessing and his receiving them depended depended upon his response. So Abraham responded to the command and promise by faith. And that is how God deals with all of us. He has a plan for our life and he is expecting us to respond to that command with faith. Now let me take you some of the promises in the Bible. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plan to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and future. Now I want you, if you have a pen and paper, note down this verse and specifically these words. Prosper you, not to harm you, give you hope and a future. And we will refer that as we go along with this message. Or if you have a, a bookmark, so put on Jeremiah chapter 29th. Because that's the promise of God for our lives. For each one of you, it was not just for Jeremiah, for each one of us. And Paul also says in Ephesians 2 verse 10, for we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Each one of us is unique creation. We are God's handiwork. None of us two are equal. None of us two are same. And he has created us because he has a plan for us to do good work. And what is that plan? To plan to give us hope plan to give us future. That's the plan God has for us. And it, and God's plan include entire humanity through Christ. Entire humanity. Now that we know that God has a plan for us, a plan to give us hope and future, and that God expects us to to respond to him in faith. Now let's move towards some of the practical approach of moving on. First and foremost, you would think, how do we know when God wants us to move on? How do we know it's time to move? You know, sometimes I feel uh, the people in the Old Testament had a pretty easy life. They had no problem in hearing God. God either spoke through the prophets or his servants 
and his word and direction were so clear do this do that follow look at the cloud and pillar and follow it was so easy but what about now how do i know if god is calling me to move how do i know god is calling me to leave something and to get on to something sometimes we feel god is not talking directly to me not through my friend not through my pastor how it is but that's not true god is still in very much communion with each one of us in today's time each one of us through his holy spirit and if you see john chapter 14 verse 16 and 26 one second this chair is making quite a lot of noises and jesus says in verse 16 and i will ask the father and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever and in verse 26 he says but the advocate the holy spirit whom the father will send in my name will teach you the things and will remind you of everything i have said to you everything i have said to you it's the holy spirit that will tell us when it is time to move god is in constant communion with us through jesus christ with the help of holy spirit the more you know the nature of our triune god the more you realize that they are in constant communion with each other and they want to include us humanity into it and this communion is nothing but a participation of love joy togetherness you know uh, a theologian uh, kruger baxter says the triune god meets us not in the sky or in the self generated religions but in our ordinary human existence god comes and involves very much in our life where we are god wants us to be in communion the same way they are in communion god the father jesus christ and the holy spirit and john chapter 16 verse 13 says but when he the spirit of truth comes he will guide you into all the truth for he will not speak on his own initiative but whatever he hears he will speak and he will disclose to you what it is to come the holy spirit is that gentle voice which will guide us when to wait and when to move i want to ask you today are you in communion with god and with jesus christ through his holy spirit as you continue your journey are you in communion with them do you have time to hear his gentle voice amongst the chaos of your worldly wisdom look deep into ourselves do we have time to listen and now that we know that holy spirit will guide us to know when it is the time to move then the next question is how do we then respond to god's call to move on now we know that it's time to move how do we respond and let's see hebrews 11 verse 8 says by faith abraham when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance obeyed and went even though he did not know where he was going by faith by faith abraham responded imagine not knowing where the he was going and such should be our response in obedience to his call in faith now we know that the we know the truth that if we do not respond to god's 
in his direction we will not leave our present situation and move towards fulfilling god's plan now recently uh, we watch sight and sound state of art theater- theatrical production about jonah on tbn network now we all know the story of jonah god asked jonah to go to nineveh while he ran to other town tarshish but eventually god brings him back to deliver the message to the people of nineveh and now while we were watching the show through the eyes of jonah i had a revelation the whole story of journey was never only about the people of nineveh and their repentance of sin it was not just that it was about the transformation of jonah's heart and god's patience in dealing with this transformation now you know jonah was very upset and angry when god asked him to deliver the message of repentance and deliverance to nineveh now he firmly believed that the righteous are judged fairly and are blessed while the ungodly shall be judged and punished and he didn't like the concept that god is asking nineveh because he knew that god will extend his mercy and i also see the thing god could have used any other prophet but he chose jonah for jonah had to go through this journey of transformation of his heart through obedience and similar is god's way of dealing with each one of us and he expect us to trust him in obedience as we go through this journey and now let me take you back to my testimony because when we hear the testimony from only one angle it's not complete it's not complete without the other angle now because you would have seen as i told you life was perfect and you will see you so sad they had to leave everything lost my job at the peak of my career that's sad but on the contrary when i stand today and i want to tell you the same testimony it was not so because when god called us to move from kenya we responded with reluctance perhaps we became comfortable living in kenya and thought that life is best here but nevertheless god had other plans he wanted us to move from up further in our walk of faith and he wanted us to depend on him to survive for one complete jobless year he wanted to convey that he has a better plan for us plans to prosper us and give us hope now i'll tell you how the those things happen now i was one of very few when i asked them that my daughter has not yet completed her school term could you please grant me an extension i was one of very few who was given <clears throat> that chance to continue another 3 months now this 3 months of salary helped us financially to sustain for the 6 months god had all of this in his mind he didn't forget us after even coming back to india the time we had for one year we were able to renovate our house to make it livable and we made one of the best memories with our parents and uh, my in-laws and in one way i needed that break from work to take control of our personal commitments god didn't withheld anything i thought i was at peak of my career and i had to come down everybody in my office knew that we are christian and i do lot of service and i was one of the prayer was that lord for your name sake show let them see that you came to a help and that time god didn't but he didn't withhold anything from us he gave me my job back right after one year and he bestowed my honor i was awarded and the the news of that award went to each and every of my colleague who saw that i had to go through the job loss and now i use my experience to travel around the world even in our personal ministry it took a sharp afflict 
in the local church god gave us a responsibility to lead the bible study i was asked uh, to go to nearby village and share the gospel in marathi and that was the outreach for me first time now we are being trained here in gca so in summary god has lifted us up and i believe greater things are yet to come so what am i trying to tell you here god's love for us is unconditional that even with our resistance running around he is very patient in dealing with us and in our, he walks with us in every step in our state of waiting and in our stage of moving he does not give up on us our disobedience will only prolong the obvious ultimately god will lead us one way or another towards the destination and if you see second peter chapter 3 verse 9 now the lord is not slow about enacting his promise remember the promise we not down now the now the lord is not slow about enacting his promise slow is how some people want to characterize it no he is not slow but patient and merciful to you not wanting anyone to be destroyed but wanting everyone to turn away from following his own path and to turn toward god god wants us such is his love he wants everyone to come back to him he does not want to leave anyone from the promise now there is a sense in which all of us are called to leave something in order to enter into the promise of god the thing that hold us down and keep us back from fulfilling the promise of god are often the things that has a strong emotional attachment to it it might be a particular habit a lifestyle for example moving from one career to another whatever it is unless we are prepared to move from those things in obedience to god command we will never enter into the place of his blessing unless we are prepared to move out we will never move in unless we are prepared to let go we will never take hold of new things such is god's working in our lives and we must be where god wants us to be again this is only possible through faith why are you opening that now in conclusion i want to share the promise of god's commitment and hope for us and hebrews chapter 6 verse 18 and 19 from the virgin voice so god has a plan god has given us two unchanging things his promise and his oath these prove that it is impossible for god to lie and as a result we come to god for refuge might be encouraged to seize that hope that is set before us the hope is real and true an anchor to steady a restless soul a hope that lead us back behind the curtain to where god is now do you remember the promise i said put it in the bible note down or take a photo god stand firm in his promises and oath for it is impossible for god to lie and that promise that we just saw is for each one of you for me for our family for our children for their children in faith in faith remember god has a plan to prosper you and not to harm you plan to give you hope and a future and that is true now it might appear that we are stuck sometime you might see that your problem is bigger than the hope your problem or situation is so bigger that you cannot see the hope or the solution just like the red sea in the bible now we all remember how god parted the red sea to allow the israelite 
to cross and be saved from the mighty army of Pharaoh. But we often overlook one small act of faith that lead to the parting of Red Sea. And move with me to Exodus chapter 14, verse 15 and 16. If you remember verse 14, Moses said, wait on the Lord. The Israelites, that you, the, the Egyptians that you see, you will not see them anymore. In verse 15, then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelite can go through the sea on dry ground. God relied on Moses' faith to work out that miracle. And this is what I want to ask you today. Would you have this level of faith to raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea of your problems, your challenges, your impossible situation to divide the water and step in the obedience of call, obedience to the call of God, just as Moses did? Let's pray. Hallelujah. Gracious Father, such is your love, O oh Lord, that you have planned to give us hope, planned to give us future, O oh Lord. And each one of us are included, not because of what we do, not because of how we do, but because of you and your love toward the entire humanity. And we thank you, O oh Lord. Now give us strength to hold strong on that hope and help us to be respond to your call of moment in our life in faith, O oh Lord. Now we don't know where could be our brothers and sisters are stuck. We don't know when it is the time for them to move, but we know that through your Holy Spirit, you will tell them that it's time to move and that each one of us, O oh Lord, will respond like Abraham did in faith, O oh Lord. And you will make every promises that you have done to us come true, O oh Lord, because of your love. We thank you and bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.